the events described in today's video took place within the small town of Monkseaton, northeast England. On April the 30th, 1989, at approximately 11.40 a.m., 22-year-old local civil servant Robert Sartin left his home dressed all in black, carrying a hunting knife and his father's legally acquired shotgun with intentions to kill as many people as he could. His first victim was 43-year-old Judith Rhodes, who Sartin shot through the windscreen of her car. Thankfully, she only sustained an injury to her hand as she dived for cover. Next, Sartin turned his attention to Lorraine Noble, aged 39, who Sartin shot as she tried to flee from him. After this, Sartin came across three people who were casually chatting in the street. Sartin shot all three of them. Thankfully, everyone that Sartin had attacked so far had survived, but unfortunately, his next victim would not be so lucky. 41-year-old Kenneth McIntosh, father of two, was shot and killed while returning home from church service. According to witnesses, Mr. McIntosh begged for his life, only for Sartin to reply, No, it's your day to die, and then proceeded to shoot him in the chest. A witness, David Shoulder, was making his way back home after a visit to the local newsagent. He was initially stopped by police, who were gathered at the top of the street of which he lived, who told him he couldn't go any further. But Shoulder protested and asked to be allowed to get back to his family. Despite what was going on, the police agreed to let him pass and make his way back home. Unfortunately, on the way to his home, he came across the corpse of Kenneth McIntosh, who was laying dead outside of his front gate. If you were in Monkseaton on that day, it appears that even if you weren't outside your home, you were not safe, as one of Sartan's victims was shot while she looked out of her window, worried and wondering what was happening outside. Her curiosity took priority over her anxiety and self-preservation, and unfortunately, Robert noticed her peering out of her window. Imagine what it must be like to hear terrifying screams and gunshots outside, peeking out of your window to try and identify the source of the strange noises, only to see a man carrying a shotgun, and unfortunately, he somehow managed to spot you through your window, and then raises his weapon at you, fires, and the bullet actually hits you. After shooting Kathleen Lynch through her window, Sarton next came across Brian Thomas, who was riding his bike. As Sarton approached Brian with his shotgun, Brian shouted, don't be so bloody stupid. Sarton's response to this was to raise his shotgun towards Brian and blast him off his bike. The next encounter is definitely the strangest one. Sarton came across 75-year-old Vera Burroughs, who confronted him and asked him what was going on. In a calm voice, he said, It's me. I'm killing people. I'm going to kill you. He pointed his gun at her, hesitated, and then said, Oh, you're old, so I won't kill you, and then walked away. One of his victims that survived unfortunately ended up with 60 shotgun pellets embedded in his body, 50 of which could not be removed, and are still inside of him today. For years afterwards, he would set off airport metal detectors because of all the shrapnel in his body. He often had to carry newspaper cuttings about the Monkseaton shootings to explain why this was. After this, Sarton continued to shoot people who were working in their gardens, driving their cars, or leaving church. In total, he attempted to kill 17 people, successfully killing one and wounding the others. After firing his final shot, Sarton got into his car and drove to a town called Whitley Bay. A police officer was driving an unmarked police car in the area and heard a radio call about the shootings. He saw Sarton's car and followed it. Sarton parked his car in a car park and then emerged from his car without his gun and willingly surrendered. He was then arrested. In 1990, 
Sardin was charged with one count of murder and 16 counts of attempted murder, but because of his mental state, the case did not get to court until 1996. He pleaded not guilty to all charges by virtue of insanity. Mr. Justice Kennedy ordered that Sartan should spend the rest of his life in a secure hospital, stating the following, You will not be released because I make an order that you should be detained without the limit of time. There is no question that this tragedy came about because you were, as you remain, a gravely ill man. Robert Sartan later made a statement, Apologizing for the terrible offenses I carried out, will not help the family of the innocent man I killed or ease the memories of all the people I have hurt. What I want my victims and the family of Mr. McIntosh to know is that their awful pain was not the result of a planned or intended crime and there was no pleasure involved. It was completely the product of a mental illness so severe that reality was completely taken over by insanity. All I want to say to everyone involved in this tragedy, the people on the legal side, the police, my family, and all those whose lives I have affected, is that I am so very sorry. Robert Sarton was being treated by a psychiatrist, Dr. Marion Swan. She stated that Robert Sarton was suffering from a major psychotic illness, a rare and severe form of schizophrenia, which unfortunately there is no cure for. Robert had told the police that he was hearing the voice of a serial killer inside of his mind. The voice of the killer was that of Michael Myers and it ordered him to kill. According to some sources, he had rented the movie Halloween weeks before the attack took place. He was ordered to spend the rest of his life in a psychiatric hospital. He has been placed in Ashworth Hospital in Liverpool, where he remains to this day. He is currently 55 years old.